Hello everyone, welcome to the Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the fifth episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Taking Care of Business. Now this is a somewhat interesting episode because it has three different plot lines that all affect each other throughout the episode. First of all, a general visits Grid Battle Force, and he so happens to be Ben and Betty's father. And he wants to show off a great idea they had, which is taking parts of the Tronics and to make something new out of them. And they pretty much made a dog drone out of it. But it's not fully functional because instead of attacking the dummy, it attacks Ben instead. But Nate gets the idea that there are parts of Giga Drones all over the city from when they exploded. Maybe we can use some of their parts. And the general agrees that's a good idea and grants the Rangers use of a secret hangar that his division happens to control. So throughout this episode, the Rangers are using their Zords to collect different gigadrone pieces. Unfortunately, all the circuits are fried, so Nate believes that nothing is useful so far that they've collected. Devin, however, is not part of this material collecting and was almost late for his meeting with the general. That's because his father hooked him up for a job at Sudsy's Car Wash. Now, Devin, of course, is worried that it would take away from his duties as a ranger, so he tries up to make up a story that he has a big game tournament, you know, Backstreet Ballers 3, coming up soon. And that's most definitely not a reference to Street Fighter at all. But in any case, his father pretty much begs him to take the job. He's saying that, you know, this might not be the best, most glamorous thing, but you gotta start somewhere. And the thing that really stood out for me about uh, Mayor Daniel's performance was that he was not over-the-top intense as he was in his first few appearances. I mean, he's serious, yes, but he's calm and down-to-earth. He just comes off as a father who cares about his son, who cares about his future, and wants to motivate him and get him a push in a direction to start taking his life seriously. He doesn't appear to be super authoritative and strict. And he also doesn't have that intense accent to his voice that he had in his first few appearances. Which to me is an improvement. He sounds like a very human character, and his lines are delivered very well. And really all the acting in this season is great, but so far out of these first five episodes, Mayor Daniels is the one that really sticks out as the most impressive here. Especially given this series' history and the quality of acting it's often known for it. <laughs> but this also means that Devin is late to the battle when... The Blaze Avatar creates a uh, Robotron out of a circular saw called Slicertron. And he can shoot little saws around and they look like Mega Man's Metal Blades. And it can slice through anything, even a Morph X Tower, to make it easy for them to collect Morph X energy. And so when fighting Ravi and Zoe, he knocks a tower over them. And if Devin didn't show up just in time, they would have definitely been defeated. To which the two of them are very frustrated with the situation and he wanted Devin to give up the job but he doesn't want to because he feels like he's finally impressing his father that he's not being a disappointment. So Red Ranger is currently torn between doing what he thinks is his true duty as well as making his father proud of him. There is a really nice scene where Devin's father comes to check how he's doing at work either his first or his second day and he decides to help out and show him some tricks. He takes off his suit jacket and just helps him wipe out the car He's a little playful during it too. He's really loosened up. I mean, because apparently he did used to work as a car wash when he was younger. And that's how he paid for all the dates with Devin's mother. Again, going back to what I said, this really just fleshes him out and makes him look like a much more human character. Instead of a caricature, as the way he was portrayed in his first episode. Again, great job here. Now, another time when he's working, Robbie and Zoe come to help him out and get his work done sooner. But of course, they have to put their ranger comms as well as their phones aside. You know, not to get them wet and damaged. Of course, Scrozzle sees this because he has hacked into every security camera in Coral Harbor. So I'm assuming he don't have access to the ones at Grid Battle Force. Just the ones around the public. So while the rangers are busy, Blaze destroys their devices so that Grid Battle Force cannot get in touch with them. And then Commander Shaw shows up in the military van and she wants to know where they have been because one Morph X tower has already been drained of its energy. And then they find the broken phones and communicators. So rangers quickly find out what's going on. And then Devin goes and tells his boss that he has to go for an emergency. Unfortunately, Sudsy is tired of him just showing up and leaving and coming back all the time. He said earlier that if he's working there, he has to be there. And finally this time he says, 
I don't care if you're the mayor's son, if you run off this time, you're fired, and your father will hear of this. Devin just takes a few seconds to deliberate, and he just says sorry and just runs off to beat a Red Ranger. And when the mayor is getting a call on his phone about what happened, it gets interrupted because his limo stops in front of the battle of the Rangers with Slicer, Trina, and Blaze. And then some young girl walks onto his scene and is about to get sliced in half by one of Slicer, saws. But then quickly, the Red Ranger just dashes in front of her and moves her to safety. And then Devin and his father just have a moment of staring at each other. And then the Red Ranger runs off, and Mayor Daniel stays and watches the rest of the battle. I mean, Blaze just retreats as soon as Ravi uses his super muscular gorilla punch on him once. However, it, however, he's not a total failure because... The 300 tens of Morphex they did steal was enough to power up a Gamma-type Gigatron, which is more humanoid in appearance, and it still gets the circular saw weapon, and it shows up right in between two giant Morphex towers. Naturally, Devin tries to attack it, but this time, it just creates a shield that can deflect any of his attacks, and quickly, it hits him with a shockwave that deactivates the computers within the Red Zord. Which isn't good because he can't move at all inside it while the systems are rebooting. Meanwhile, he can be easily be attacked and the Morphax can easily be taken. And since Slicertron is still at the large, Jax and Smash are piling the other Zords themselves, while the Yellow and Blue Rangers are fighting on the ground. And not even their attacks can penetrate this, this Gamma Giga Drone's defenses. Fortunately, Devin can figure out how to get past the force field barrier. First, he throws his sword at it, and it goes right through the center, and it gets stuck there. But then Devin leaps forward and smashes it through and slices the chest open. And he did that way on purpose to just simply deactivate the Giga Drone, instead of completely destroying it. So that Nate will have something he can work with. As for Slicertron, he goes down quickly. It's just two regular blasters that destroy him. Nothing special. Now in the aftermath, Nate is marveling at just how incredible he can put that technology to use for the good side. And he was about to have all the other parts scrapped, but Ben and Betty tell him no because they found a way to remote control some of the pieces. And by example, they have one arm that they can actually make move. So who knows, it very well may be useful. And Dora just tosses Betty up in the air and lands straight on top of Ben. Yeah, it's still got some more work. However, it's not a truly funny ending. Because we see at the gym, which is more like the juice bar still, <laughs> Devin is on the phone with his father, and he says he's sorry for screwing up the job. And then Adam Daniels just gets his super serious voice again and says, Not as sorry as I am. But before he can sulk about it too long, there's a special thing on TV where the mayor is saying that he was originally against the Morphex project, but not so much anymore because he's seen the Rangers in action. And that while the public may not know who they are, he's glad to have them and is proud to have them as part of the city's defense. Which makes Devin smile because he knows that his father's proud of him. It's just that he just doesn't know it yet. And that's how the episode ends. Now this was a really, really good episode. I mean, the action was pretty good. And the story and writing was amazing. I love the dynamic between Devin and his father. I mean, we do have Wes and Mr. Collins. It does parallel that from Time Force. But Devin says, Mr. Collins was always just one that Wes to go into business and take over his company. And saw most public emergencies as a way to make profits. For about two thirds of the series before he started turning around. Not so much here. This time Devin's father is actually really actually pretty normal. He just doesn't know he's part of an extraordinary situation. So I'm wondering what's gonna happen with the big reveal that Devin is the Red Ranger. Because I don't think they're gonna say that as something for the finale. If they do, it would be for the first half of the series, not when they do Super Beast Morphers. Because the mayor is obviously a major character. He's not just someone to decide to appear from time to time. He commands a lot of authority, a lot of respect. He drives parts of the plot forward, and his actions have a and his actions have a major impact on the Rangers' lives as well as their development as characters throughout the show. And we get to see multiple sides of him. We see his professional side, we see his humanitarian side, we see his strict father side, and we see his loving father side. He is an extremely well-rounded and well-acted character. And really, that's something I've been complimenting this season a lot on so far, is the acting. Like, the past few seasons of Power Rangers haven't had bad acting, 
but they haven't had anything superb either. But this season, I can't find really any nitpick about the acting. It is what I wanted to say if not for the general that appeared in this episode. Aside from the uniform he wears, he does not appear or act like anyone in the military. And the way he has acted before under made him sound kind of dumb and unassuming. Instead of someone who's very high ranking and very influential inside of a military government organization that has charge of protecting the city from supernatural attacks. I guess because he's Ben and Betty's father who's a kind of relief, he wasn't taken as seriously, but he should have had a little bit more seriousness to the way he was portrayed, just given his position and what he offered the Rangers. But really, that's my only negative. I mean, this season is doing so much different. I mean, they're flushing out the characters very early on and integrating that into the overall plot of the show, at least for the character arcs. Now there was one in detail I liked that when they were scolding Devin for being late with his job, when they first fought a Slicetron, Avabi was using the little portable fan to cool himself off and Zoe was eating a carrot. So they're still bringing attention that they have these weaknesses. Though Devin's has not been brought up at all since the first time he had it. So who knows? I mean that's a very subtle detail and if you didn't know about these weaknesses, it still would have just played in pretty well to that moment. Just because they were both trying to recover from the battle that they didn't win at the time. So yeah, I think Hasbro taking this series over has been a good thing. Because nothing about Beast Morphers that I have seen, I have anything negative to say about. Which means I'm seriously looking forward to episode 6. And I hope you are as well. Is there stuff about this season so far you think that can improve? Why don't you leave a comment and tell me? Because I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say. But until then, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and let the power protect you.